And we begin our investigation of this problem by talking to those in charge of high school athletics across the state of Ohio. On Friday nights in the fall in big cities and small towns, you find the heart and soul of a community on full display. High school sports have become a staple of community pride and success. And this fall, it's a stage to highlight a growing issue in high school athletics, marked by a simple sticker and the letters AT. As important as the results are on the field, it's even more important the safety of the athletes competing. And that's where an athletic trainer comes in. Our whole goal is prevention. If we can prevent that injury from happening, if we prevent that emergency from happening, then we're doing our job well. Then hopefully we're, we're providing the best care possible. But a lack of athletic trainers continues to be a problem at high schools across our area and the country. If you have no medical provider on site, if you have someone who doesn't know what they're doing, and is just a, a person out of the stands, that can really get dicey. Nationally, only 37% of high schools have a full-time athletic trainer. According to the National Athletic Trainers Association, at the University of Connecticut, there's an institute named after a former National Football League player who died while playing football, the Corey Stringer Institute. They created ATLAS, or Athletic Training Location and Services, and then mapped the status of athletic training at more than 20,000 high schools across America. According to Atlas, of the 864 public and private secondary schools in Ohio, 47% have a full-time athletic trainer on staff. 35% have a part-time athletic trainer, leaving 18% without any athletic training services at all. In Kentucky, 34% of the 288 schools don't have an athletic trainer. And in Indiana, only 17% of the 437 schools don't have any athletic training. If you have money to be able to have football and to have soccer and to have volleyball and all of these sports, if you have money to be able to provide for that, you need to be able to find money to be able to help have someone on site like an athletic trainer. Schools with part-time trainers often only have a medical professional present at games, leaving athletes without a medical professional during regular practice hours. The vast majority of the injuries happen during the week and prior to that game. Schools are not required by the OHSAA to have an athletic trainer. However, coaches are required to be trained in things like concussion safety and CPR. Jerry Snodgrass, the commissioner of the OHSAA, said there are no requirements under OHSAA bylaws to have an athletic trainer present at regular season events. We want our kids to be safe. We want everybody to be safe. So most schools will make that conscious effort, but there can be no mandate that we have a, a trainer at a contest. The only time an athletic trainer is required at an event is at a tournament contest, which is owned and run by the OHSAA. So the OHSAA pays for the athletic trainers to be in attendance. So why aren't trainers a requirement during the rest of the year? Well, the OHSAA says it doesn't have the ability to force schools to add something that would cost the schools money. It's an unfunded mandate. ADs are now a standard of care. That if, if an athletic trainer or if a medical site doesn't have an AED, there's significant liability there. Shouldn't athletic trainers also be the standard of care? Our reporting, of course, does not stop here. In the coming weeks, you'll see how AEDs became a standard of care and how athletic trainers could follow. We'll also explain the challenges of high schools face with and without athletic trainers. All right. Thank you, Chris.